Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today's webinar. Uh, my name is Chin Nguyen. I'm Technical Application Specialist, Dulok Might. So this webinar is one of webinar series we call Microfoodic 101 with Dulok Might. And this will be delivered every uh, last Thursday of each month around 2021. So today, we will talk about the different methods for making PLZA particles for controlled drug delivery. So the agenda today will be including a presentation and Q&A section. So during the my presentation, if you have any question, please write out the question in the question box. So I will try to directly uh, respond to you uh, on the question in the Q&A section. The presentation today, oh, sorry. So presentation today uh, will be including the introduction, the PLJ microparticle production, and next we will talk about the PLJ nanoparticle production and system scale. So finally, is the conclusion. So what are PLJ particles? It is a polylactic glycolic acid. It's one of the most successfully developed biodegradable polymers used as the drug delivery system. And it is approved by FDA and EMA. With current method of PLGA synthesis, it relies on bad type homologizers that typically result in the wide uh, particle size distribution, which is not attractive for any pharmaceutical application. Using the microfluidic method uh, for nanoparticle synthesis, it brings many advantages uh, as below. So, for example, like it enhances control over each stage of particle fabrication process, and and it has great particle error with narrow side distribution, and we can achieve small abrasive size. Also, it's very easy to scale up due to uh, low input energies. Uh, use in uh, microfluidic method. So PLGA is widely used for micro encapsulation and control release of the API uh, drug protein and antigens, and it's recognized safe as the FDA. With traditional method for hydrophilic drug loading, it's uh, are poor due to the low drug loading and also it produces polydispersed particles which uh, hinder accurate drug release. Using the microfluidic methods, it, uh, we, can do, uh, we can achieve the high drug encapsulation efficiencies and high monodispersity in products. Here, showing the several methods to generate the microparticles and nanoparticles, generally using the, with the microfluidic so for microparticles, we use drop forming method which generate the droplet uh, and therefore we can generate the microparticles. With nanoparticles, we use the flow focusing methods. Uh, so we make we, we pumping and making stream, laminar stream between two fluids, and the polymer will dissolve in the one solvent, and and the nanoparticles uh, were believed. Uh, to generate at the interface of the two stream. So there's a many methods to form the particles, at least like chemical method, rapid mixing, solvent extraction, and thermal treatment, or UV polymerization, chemical cross-linking, and nano precipitation. So especially for PLA particles generation, we use solvent solvent extraction. This slide showing our single channel system we use in uh, for in, in, in lab scale for IND research for making PLGA micro and nanoparticles. So basically it will include three pumps and connecting with the microfluidic chip. The microfluidic chip is located under microscope we integrate with the uh, uh, high-speed camera, so uh, it can visualize easily all the process happened inside the microfluidic chip. 
So the system is well designed, very flexible, and it can apply many applications depending on uh, the, the target of, uh, products of the each customer. So using different chip geometry, we can uh, do the many uh, different applications. For example, in here we have a droplet uh, microfluidic chip. It can use for generation of the microparticles, PLGA particles, and with the five input chip in here or micromixer chip for nano uh, particle generation. For system scale, we have a, a Taylor system uh, that increase output uh, in three distinct ways, like increase the flow rate through the individual uh, junctions, or increase number of junctions working in parallel, and increase number of chips working in parallel. So one Taylor's clamp modules allow a, a typical flow output of three mil per minute of drop it from one microfluidic chip with seven channel uh, junction uh, as you can see in here, it, it can work in parallel in one chip. And with the Taylor system, we can run uh, up to 10 chips working in parallel in one system. So it means it would increase the flow output up to 30 mil per minute if we use 10 uh, uh, clamp motors working together. So this section we will talk about the way to produce a PLGA microparticles. So the PLGA microparticles uh, can be uh, generated uh, by the particle formation process using the micromixing and emulsification methods as you can see in this uh, scheme. So it's following the four steps. Uh, so step one is the precipitation and after that uh, step two is solvent displacement and next is the solvent drainage and finally is the solid content. So for PLGAs, microparticle generation, so PLGA is dissolved into an organic solvent with low water miscibility, for example, like DCM, dimethyl perchloride uh, solvent. So droplets are formed at the, the microfluidic chip junction and drop side droplet size is controlled by the selecting of the junction size or asserting of relative flow rate continuous and droplet phase. And the PLGA is the solid monodisper particles occurs at the yard of the solvent evaporization as you can see in uh, this diagram. It's showing the transfer route of the DCM from droplet through the continuous phase into the atmosphere. Here, you can see a real image of what the process looks like. Uh, so in this images, we use 100 micrometer chip junction to form, uh, 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 to form the 100 micrometer droplet. So this one showing the sequence of the image of the sec 30 second of part demonstrating of the removals of the solvent from polymer droplet resulting in formation of the polymer bits. So at initial time, we can generate the 100 micrometer uh, uh, droplet. And after five minutes, around two to five minutes, finally it can generate uh, the around 23 micrometer uh, PLGA bit. This video uh, will show you um, in more detail uh, about the solvent extraction uh, PLGA production. So with initial diameter around 86 micrometers, so during the time, the, the solvent extraction will be occur and it will leave finally around 24 micrometers of the PLGA micro uh, particles after around the two to five minutes. So uh, as I should remind you about how to control the droplet uh, side to control the particle side. So we have two ways to control the, the microparticle side uh, in, in controlling the droplet side. So the first is just selecting uh, the chip junction side 
if you select the larger chip junction size, you can generate the, the larger droplet and, and it will uh, help you to generate the larger microparticles. And using small chip junction size, you can uh, form the small droplet size. The second way is um, uh, using just adjusting of the flow rate ratio of the uh, droplet phase and continued phase. So, for example, if you increase the flow rate of the continued phase, and it will decrease the droplet size. And if you increase the droplet phase flow rate, it will increase the droplet phase, uh, droplet size. The droplet generation mode is also very important in particle generation, microparticle generation. So normally you can create, you can generate the droplets to generate the microparticles in the dripping region by uh, just adjusting the flow rate ratio. However, if you flowing too fast, you can achieve the zetting region. Uh, that can make the lamina flow between the two streams. In this case, the droplet will not formation, will not form. And by just adjusting the ratio, we can uh, achieve a tau tick. And uh, if the pressure and imbalance, the backflow will be occurs. It's an unwanted pro process during uh, the microfluidic production. So this, if you have a look at this graph, you can see it uh, showing the variation of droplet size and frequency by changing the droplet and carrier pressure. So you will get uh, the, the carry backflow limit, the zetting limit, the stable dripping limit, uh, uh, sorry, the droplet backflow limit, and you will get a stable dripping region. So uh, it's very important during the, for the, Drop it uh, for the particle microparticle generation process because you should select the sample, uh, the conditions uh, at the in the stable dripping and it not nearby any boundaries uh, or between the setting limit or any limit of the uh, carry back flow or uh, drop it back flow. Because if it's nearby here, so when the system a little bit uh, affected by the rapid formation, so uh, it will be a change in the flow rate uh, or the pressure of its phase. So it will go out to the stable dripping and uh, the zetting limit or another limit uh, that will be happen. So it, it will make the system is easy to unstable during the um, running experiment. So this slide showing the experimental setup using the droplet chip. In here is the dolomite droplet chip. So for this uh, the system setup, so we use three pumps. In this case, one pump for uh, carrier fluid. Uh, is uh, normally we pump the waters or um, the, the aqua phase uh, uh, solution. We contain the surfactant and water. And the interface will be uh, including the polymer mixing uh, in the solvent and to generate the droplet. And priming fluid, we contain only solvent uh, to flushing before and after uh, the running experiment to remove all of the remains uh, polymers, which can uh, easily uh, block the chip before and after the reaction. And the product will be collect at the uh, collection sample collection. In here, showing the more details, the condition for making a microparticle, PLGA microparticles. In this case, we, uh, we use the PLGA uh, with 1% dissolved in DCM as a solvent and pumping at 20 microliter per minute. And the continuous phase will be water and dissolve with 1% PBA for the Venus alcohol uh, as the surfactant to, to stabilize the droplets and it's pumping the, at the 50 microliter per minute so it will be generated uh, at the 100 micrometer droplet as a production. So in this here image you can see the droplet uh, at initial time uh, after the bio uh, 
in, in inside the vial collection, you know, we, we have the hundreds of micrometers in drop inside, and during the time, the solvent will evaporate to uh, to, to, to generate the, the micro particle, the PLDA. So finally, we can achieve the 23 micrometer of the PLDA bit. So with our dolomite to really pore technology uh, can uh, help you uh, to prevent any polymer uh, to contact with the channels and it have to long run time without blocking for the chip uh, with the running the, the polymer the experiment. This part, we will talk more about the nanoparticle production, PLGA nanoparticle production. Different with the microparticles, the, the production, for nanoparticle production, PLGA nanoparticle production, we use the flow focusing methods. So polymers particle will, uh, will, will, will form, will be formed using a process of the nucleation and grow. And you can see the first step in, in this scheme. So we make a laminar stream in here with the polymers dissolved in a solvent, uh, for example, like acetone and crossing out by fast mixing with the anti-solvent like water, which contains a surfactant to stabilize the particle against agglom uh, agglomeration. And, and if you're following the, the first step like nucleation, fast grow, slow grow, and finally the Oswald shifting to generate of the uh, uh, different to generate of nanoparticles. And the particle size is controlled by just changing the relative flow rate of the polymer and aqueous solution. And in this case, the API or drug can be brought in uh, both continued phase in case of the, the continued phase in case of the hydrophilic or the droplet phase in, in case of the hydrophobic. So different with not a micro particles uh, encapsulate uh, encapsulation so normally it's it used for hydrophobic uh, hydrophobic uh, the API properties so we just encapsulate inside in, in, in the droplet phase not in quantum phase however in this case with nanoparticle we can uh, encapsulate through the both of the um, flow both of fluid of the process so here is showing the several methods uh, to generate of the PLGA nanoparticles. The method one is we can set up as the following the scheme. So we use a fine food chip, hydrophilic chip, as you can see in here. So the connection uh, will be showing this in this uh, image, you can see the out the outer channels will connect with the flushing, flushing fluid, uh, like just uh, the on the solvent, and uh, or, or or sorry, flushing fluid should be uh, the DI water or or aqueous phase, and the, the anti solvent will be uh, pumping like also using the aqueous phase or DI water. And the inner phase, inner phase is the PLGA solution, which, uh, which contain uh, PLGA in, in, in uh, for example, like acetone. So uh, here, the reactants, the, the, uh, the system setup, so including the three pump for the three the material, like flushing fluids, PLGA solution, and anti solvent solution. And the same is a, a sample after uh, our going out to the chip, we will collect at the sample collection. So in this uh, experiment, we will uh, running the, the concentration of the PLGA from 0.5 to 2% of the uh, uh, PLGA concentration. And the aqua alpha phase uh, is a water-based emulsion stabilizer. It's uh, used to nu nucleate and stabilize the polymer nanoparticles. Here, so in some results uh, for this experiment, so it, we can achieve the stable formation of the polymer particles. And polymer particles uh, were produced continuously with no any intervention uh, in, in, interventions for a 
a periods of the five hours, and during this five hour production periods, the polymer solution flow rate was set to 20 micrometers per minute. And the particle size was successfully controlled in the region, region of the 100 to 200 nanometer by just adjusting of the relative flow rate ratio of uh, absolute flow, uh, absolute flow rate uh, of the polymer solution and upper phase. Here is another setup for using our different chip geometry. We have the fine input chip, uh, which you can show in, in you can show, see here in here with the three three D pore design that can uh, uh, enhance the long term running and prevent any uh, uh, polymerase the deposition on the reactor walls. So the system setup is similar. We have just in this case we may use two pumps, one pump for droplet interface, which contain the PLG and acetone, and the other phase, continuous phase, we will be pumping uh, by second pump, and uh, uh, each will be the water, the I water or the PBS solution. And here showing some uh, example, we just example uh, the particle size distribution. Uh, depending on the uh, flow rate ratio between water, uh, PDLGA and water flow rate ratio uh, with R values you can see. So uh, with different flow rate ratio, we can achieve the particle size from 200 to 400 uh, nanometer. The second methodology is showing in here. So in this case, we use hundreds micrometer 3D pore hydrophobic chip is different with uh, the first uh, method. We use hydrophilic chip. In this case, we use hydrophobic chip. So it's a 3D pore chip. It looks like in this case. Uh, and the polymer solution is uh, also similar concentration from 0 0.5 to 2% of the PLGA in, in acetone. And it will be pumping to making the, uh, uh, the Laminar stream uh, to, to, between to the aquaphase and fluorophase. So in this case, aquaphase also similar to water-based emulsion stabilizer used in nucleate, uh, to nucleate and stabilize polymer nanoparticles, and it will pumping at one channel, and you can see me here. And the warp reactors or the warp reactors will uh, be protect from precipitation of polymer particle by using a water immiscible emulsion stabilizer like chlorophyll and you can pump at the one channels the microfluidic chip and chlorophyll will coat the war reactor because of this one is a hydrophobic chip so it will interact easily with the war of the reactor to prevent any excess by a polymer particle and it can prevent uh, the, the, the precipitation polymer particle during the running experiment. So this slide showing some results in using it, the methodology two. So we can achieve a stable formation of polymer particles and polymer particles were produced continuously with no intervention for periods of five hours. And during the final production periods, uh, the experiment, the flow rate of the solution was set to 50 microliter per minute, so we can run a higher flow rate using this method. And the particle size was successfully controlled in the region of the 40 to 800 nanometers by adjusting relative ratio uh, flow rate and uh, between the polymer solution and uh, upper phase. And the reagent used uh, in for in, in uh, the experiment, if, uh, I would like to introduce about the emulsion stabilizer. So the, our dolomite particle engineering team uh, has developed the aquafay and chlorophay, and the emulsion stabilizer designed for aqueous and chlorocarbon oil. So to form the stable emulsion, like stable for processing and solvent interaction, and also stable as satellite droplet performance and it's uh, easy to remove uh, by washes and, 
and compatible it's compatible with the micro fluid component and also it biocompatible with all components uh, are certified certified at the biocompatible and washable it also in expensive but highly effective for uh, running experiments the next section we'll be talk, uh, talking about the system scale so from from scale, scaling up the process was recommended by our team my team as a step by approach like before like the first we should do initial uh, test using a single channel chip to characterize process and the testing and analysis at the dolomite size and the second step is the validate process at user side using our dolomite single channel system uh, as i uh, introduced before and here is a single channel system we include three pump microfluidic uh, um, microfluidic chip and and microscope integrate with high speed camera and next step is to be validate process scale up using a multiple chip uh, channel chip uh, we in here for example like with the telos uh, telo chip with the telos uh, starter kit which allow you to running for only one chip uh, at uh, very uh, to validate the process scaling up and next step we will scale up to production level using the telos uh, system in here uh, so in this case, we can running uh, up to 10 chip working together to increase our production rate with using the, the parallel system. Here, showing the scale uh, example for PLJ microparticles that our, one of our customers have done in their site. So uh, let's say if the customer want to do with the production rate of the one ton per month, so it means the system should be running at 100 mil per minute uh, if working at a five day per week with eight hour day. And the system should be run at 25 mil per minute if uh, the customer want to run uh, all 24 per seven day and all with all the time. So in here, our customers uh, have a system which integrate a five tailor chip working in parallel to generate the microparticle PLGA. So this video showing uh, the system running at uh, 12.5 with per minute. So it means using the five chip a microphone uh, a, 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 a micro microphone chip so it's running at 12.5 we mean it mean uh, they can generate uh, 0 0.5 ton per month the production if running uh, uh, all the day and per week so here we tell about the process so as you can see in here the image is what happened inside a microphone chip and this one is a remote chamber, extend remote chamber, which allow you to pumping uh, and containing the more exist uh, sample. And here is a five uh, input, uh, five microfluidic chip working uh, together in the Taylor system with the five Taylor module. And here is one pump for uh, and uh, the custom remote chamber, which allow uh, you to uh, more more the so container of the reagent. And the final product you can see in here uh, the, is the PLGA microparticle generation. Uh, so we we'll put in, in, in to the wire to see the, how quickly or how quickly of the process can be happen if, with using the Telos uh, five chip Telos uh, system working in parallel. So. You can see here to achieve the 10 mil uh, sample, uh, we contain the micro micro uh, particle micro droplets uh, the, and and the solvents. So it's within a minute we can achieve the 10 uh, 
uh, merit of the sample is very quick. And this we saw it's about, about the, how the, the process look like, which including the solvent extraction during the, the sample collection. Uh, well, so conclusion. We have a conclusion uh, as the list five below. The methodologies for fabrication of stable PLGA microparticle and nanoparticle formulation have been demonstrated to encapsulation hydrophilic API and the particle were successfully controlled in the region of the 50 nanometer up to 30 micrometer. And in each case, use of microfluidics enables the light of API encapsulation in, in PLG particle and scale up from a, lab, a laboratory using a single Janssen system to production system is possible by using the Taylor system in each case. Well, I'm finished uh, the presentation here. Thank you for the attention and uh, Next section, we will move to the Q&A section. So if you have any question, please write out your question in uh, the Q&A uh, the question box. So we will try to deliver all the questions to you uh, uh, in the Q&A section, in this section. Thank you. Uh, I got the one question. Is there a record of this webinar? Yes, we record uh, the webinar, the average webinar, and we will uh, post uh, it in our uh, uh, channels and we will send an email about this to you after the seminar finished. Uh, yeah, again, so if you have any question, please feel free to write out the question. And um, also, I would like to, um, yeah, to now you about the next webinar topic will be related to uh, the how to encapsulate the API uh, and drug into the PLGA microparticle and nanoparticle in detail. So this will be delivered uh, on next last Thursday next month. So if you have interesting on this, please visit to our the website and have have re registration. Please feel free to um, write out your question if you have any question. Okay, um, in case if you have any question, um, now I, I, I don't see any question in this time, maybe you will have any question later. So if you have any question um, in your mind and, and uh, maybe not, not showing now, so later you please feel free to uh, reach us at uh, Hanoi office uh, at blackjay.com. So, I'm very happy to uh, send our response to one of the questions through the emails.
Um, remember that we will have uh, next webinars which focus on API encapsulation, uh, the methods in PLJ microparticle and nanoparticle in next uh, month. So if you have uh, interesting on that, please feel free to uh, go to our website and uh, have registration. Again, thank you very much. If you have and don't have any questions at this moment, uh, we would like to close the webinar at this moment. So uh, we will record, uh, we, we already record the webinar and we will pub publish uh, possibly our recourse webinars on the, our, the, our uh, channels and we will directly send to all of you uh, through the email. Thank you very much and see you again next webinars. Thank you. Bye-bye.